Hi students, welcome back to the science class. Today we are going to discuss about sexual reproduction in plants. Sexual reproduction in plants. Do you remember what we learnt in the previous class? So reproduction and the types of reproduction, vegetative propagation and asexual reproduction. So these are the topics we completed in the previous class. So what is reproduction? Production of young one that is what called reproduction of their own kind. So production of young one of their own kind is called reproduction. So the types of reproduction vegetative reproduction, sexual reproduction, asexual reproduction. What is vegetative reproduction? The reproduction takes place by the vegetative part. The reproduction takes place by the vegetative part is called vegetative reproduction. Asexual reproduction, the formation of spores from a single parent. So the reproduction takes place by single parent by the formation of spore. So that is a asexual reproduction. Today we have to learn about sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction. So already we know in the sexual reproduction two parents are involved. Two parents are involved male and female. The union of male and female gamete it produces the young one that is what called sexual reproduction. So sexual reproduction in plants. So in plants also it need two gametes male and female gamete. Okay. Next one parts of a typical flower. The flower it is the important essential organ for sexual reproduction. So it is a reproductive organ. The sexual reproduction it is takes place in the flower only. So the flower it is a modified shoot with limited growth. The flower is a modified shoot with limited growth to carry out sexual reproduction. So in the flower it have four parts are there. Four parts are there. In the lower classes you already learned. So once again I will recall that sepals, petals, stamen and corpel. So this is what a four parts in the flower. So in a flower the outer wall it is a green in color. You know very well. So that is what called sepal. The green portion of the flower it is called sepal. It is the outer layer. The next layer it is a colorful layer that is called petals that is called petals. So inside that stamens are present in the center the carpels are present. So the sepal the sepals are together called calyx sepals are together called calyx and the petals are together called corolla petals are together called corolla. The stamens are together called andrisium and the corpels are together called gynesium or pistil. Gynesium or pistil. So calyx, corolla, andrisium and gynesium are the parts of flowers. Calyx, corolla, andrisium and gynesium. So the first two parts, the calyx and corolla, they are called non-essential or accessory walls. They are called non-essential or accessory walls as they do not directly take part in the reproduction. They are indirectly helped to the reproduction but not involved in directly. So that's why they are called non-essential or accessory walls calyx and corolla. So what is the function of this calyx and corolla do you know? Calyx. So the sepals together called calyx. So what is the function of sepals? Sepals protect the 
flower when it is bud when it is bud and the next one corolla corolla it is a colorful part we know very well the petals are the colorful part this petals used to attract the insects for pollination attract the insects for pollination so these are the works for calyx and corolla next two voles are andrisium and gynesium so they are essential voles they are essential voles why because they are directly involved in the reproduction they are directly involved in the reproduction the andrisium it is the male part of the plant so male reproductive part andrisium it is a male reproductive part and the gynesium is a female reproductive part andrisium it is a male reproductive part so male gamete is produced from andrisium the gynesium it is a female reproductive part so the female gamete is produced from gynesium first we have to discuss about andrisium andrisium the male part of the flower so it is the male part of the flower it is composed of stamens already we learned the stamen the group of stamens together called andrisium the stamen it contain two portions one is a filament and one more is a anther anther the tip of the stamen it is called anther and the tail like or outgrowth is there that is what called filament the anther it is a bag like structure it only produce the pollen grains when it is mature it burst and release the pollen grains so this is what a andrisium and the next one is a gynesium first andrisium see in that picture this is what andrisium that means stamen so the stamen consists two parts see in that picture the bag like structure is called anthers and the filament one more part is filament see this is what a pollen grain so when the anther is matured it burst and release the pollen grains so pollen grains are usually spherical in shape what is spherical like ball ball like structure that is a spherical shape it is a spherical in shape and it has two layer see in that picture it has two layers exine and intine exine and intine the exine it is thick layer hard layer and it has aperture aperture mean hole the pores are there that is called germ pore the exine it is a thick layer hard layer and it have apertures called germ pore the inner thin layer is known as intine the inner layer is intine see the extern external layer is a exine and the internal layer is a intine and it is a thin and continuous layer here there is no pores but in exine the pores are there the pores are called germ pore but in the intine here there is no pore so it is thin and continuous layer and it is made up of cellulose and pectin it is made up of cellulose and pectin in the mature pollen grain it contain two types of cell so what are that mean vegetative cell and generative cell vegetative cell and generative cell vegetative cell contain the large nucleus and the generative cell divides mitotically to form the two male gametes so the male gametes are produced from generative cell so the pollen grain it contains see in that picture generative part and vegetative part from the generative part only the two male gametes are produced so once again we can see there the pollen grain it is spherical in shape it have two layer external layer and internal layer external layer is hard in nature and it have aperture this layer is called exine and the aperture is called germ pore and the intine it is a thin layer and it is made up of cellulose and pectin it is a continuous layer here there is no pore and two types of cells are there vegetative cell and generative cell 
vegetative cell it is grow as a pollen tube and the generative cell mitotically divide and it form the two male gamete this is what a pollen grain and the next one is a gynoecium it is a female part of the flower female part of the flower gynoecium it has three layers sorry three parts stigma style and ovary the tip of the gynoecium is called stigma the tip of the carpel is stigma and the neck portion is called style and the basal portion is called ovary inside the ovary the ovule is present the ovule only contain the female gamete that is egg ovule only contain the egg that is called female gamete the tip of the carpel is called stigma the neck portion is called style the basal portion is called ovary inside the ovary ovule is present now we can discuss about structure of ovule structure of ovule so the ovule it contain the mass of cell that is what called new cellus that is what called new cellus this new cellus it is covered by two layers see in that picture the center white color is called new cellus the new cell is covered by two layers that is what called integuments what is it integuments this integuments leave a pore see in the center it leave a pore that pore is called micropyle so what is the use of this micropyle the pollen tube enters through this micropyle only so the ovule attached to the ovary wall by a stalk like portion is called funiculus so the funiculus is a stalk like portion it only used to connect the ovule into the ovary and the basal po portion is called chalasa the basal part is called chalasa so and the center the embryo sac is present the center embryo sac is present see inside the new cellus the embryo sac is present this embryo sac contain three cells in the upper side three cells in the lower side and the center two nucleus are there okay so totally eight nucleus are there and the seven cells are there seven cells eight nuclei seven cells eight nuclei so the embryo sac it located in the center of the new cellus the three cells at the micropylar end okay so near the micropyle it has three cells that is egg apparatus one is a egg apparatus and another two is the another cell next one is a in the chala cell region antipodal cells are there three antipodal cells are there in the center two nuclei are present that is what called polar nuclei polar nuclei in the egg apparatus one is the egg cell and the remaining two cells are the synergids okay in the micropyla region it have three cells one is a egg apparatus and one more is a synergids okay are you understand okay next one is a process of sexual reproduction process of sexual reproduction so the sexual reproduction takes place by two steps two steps one is a pollination and one more is a fertilization pollination fertilization pollination the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a flower is called pollination this also you know very well from the anther the pollen grains are produced it should reach the stigma for reproduction for fertilization so this process is called pollination so importance of pollination why pollination should takes place it result in fertilization which, which leads to the formation of fruits and seed so pollination is a first step so it is leads to the fertilization next one is new varieties of plants are formed through the new combination of genes in case of cross pollination so in cross pollination the new combination is there so that's why new variety also can produced 
next types of pollination self pollination and cross pollination so pollination mean the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma is called pollination so what is the types of pollination it have two types self pollination and cross pollination self pollination self pollination is otherwise called autogamy autogamy and the cross pollination is otherwise called allogamy first self pollination self pollination mean nothing but the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or another flower of the same plant so pollination takes place within a plant that is called self pollination so the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or another flower of the same plant so the cross pollination mean the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the different flower of the different plant but in same species okay so it's uh, the cross pollination takes place in different plant but self pollination takes place in the same plant okay so advantages of self pollination what is the advantage self pollination is possible in certain bisexual flowers what is bisexual flowers do you know bisexual flowers the two reproductive part also present in the same flower mean that is what called bisexual that means stamens and pistil both also present in the flower mean that is what called bisexual any one only present mean that is a unisexual flower so bisexual flowers only takes place the self pollination then here there is no need of agents there is no need of help because in a flower the two parts also present so it will takes takes the pollination so that's why here there is no need of agents or help next one here there is no wastage of pollen grains because both also present in near so there is no wastage of pollen grains okay so advantages of self pollination are self pollination is possible in certain bisexual flowers here there is no need of agents and here there is no wastage of pollen grains so next one is a disadvantages of self pollination disadvantages of self pollination the seeds are less in number in the result of self pollination the seeds produce in less in number the endosperm is minute what is endosperm do you know endosperm means nothing but it is a specialized structure to provide the food to the embryo okay so for growing embryo it only provide nutrition okay so the endosperm is minute so the nutrition level also very low only so in the result of it produce the weak plants next one is a new varieties of plants cannot be produced because both gamete male gamete and female gamete produced from the single plant that's why here there is no new varieties okay so next one is a cross pollination cross pollination it is otherwise called allogamy so cross pollination mean already i told the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the different flower of the another plant but in same species this is what cross pollination so advantages of cross pollination the seeds produced as a result of cross pollination develop and germinate properly and grow into the better plants so cross pollination leads to the production of new varieties here the male and female gametes produced from the different plant so it can produce the new varieties also so here possible is there why why because both gamete also produced from the different plant okay so next more viable seeds are produced more viable seeds are produced but they very less in number the seeds are produced in the self pollination but in the result of cross pollination more viable seeds are produced viable mean do you know what is viable fertile seeds it have it having the proper growing capacity that is a viable seeds next one is a disadvantages what is the disadvantages of cross pollination pollination may fail due to the distant barrier 
I already told the pollen grains want to travel from one plant to another plant. So, maybe it is present in the too long distance mean. So, distance here, distance here it is a barrier. So, may be fail. So, the pollination may be fail due to the distance. Next, more wastage of pollen grains. So, in the traveling from one plant to another plant, maybe the pollen grain get wastage. Okay. So, next one, it may introduce some unwanted characters. I already told new varieties are produced. In the new varieties, maybe unwanted character. So, unwanted character also possible to produce. Next, flaws depend on the external agencies for pollination. Here the help is need. So, the agencies are need. It want to depend on air or water or insects or human being or animals. Any one agent is need for cross pollination. Okay. So, this is what are disadvantages. So, remaining portion the agents of cross pollination we can see in the next class. Thank you.